of Ireland's Sinn Féin political party are in Australia this week for meetings with our political leaders and the Irish community. Some of the party's members met with the Foreign Minister, Penny Wong, yesterday, where Brexit, as well as health and housing and climate change, were on the agenda. Joining me live now is Ireland's Shadow Foreign Affairs Minister, Matt Carthy. Matt, thanks so much for your time. What is the purpose of these meetings with our government? What do you want from them? Good morning, Laura, and thank you for having me on. And thank you to all the people in Australia who we've met so far on our visit, which follows on from a similar visit from the, by the Sinn Féin leader, Mary Lou Macdonald, last year. And this, to us, is about strengthening relationships between Ireland and Australia. As you know, our, um, Sinn Féin are the largest mm. political party across the island of Ireland, both north and south. We have a plan and a hope to be in government, both north and south, and we want to send a very clear message that we see the strengthening of relationships between mm. Ireland and Australia as a key pri priority for um, for our Sinn Féin government from a foreign affairs perspective. We're also very conscious that Australia has become the home for tens of thousands of Irish people, some of whom have chose to come to Australia in search of uh, a better life and are very happy to be here and will settle down with their families. Others have come here because they feel they've been forced to because of um, some of the deficiencies within um, mm. the delivery of housing and other um, areas um, in, in Ireland. And to them, what we want to ensure is that there will be a viable route back home to Ireland if that's what they choose to do in the, f in the future. Well the polls are looking pretty good for you, you're still a little way off from an election but obviously you see this Labor government, a left government, uh, with having a, a like mind to yours. So back to my original question, what do you seek from this Labor government? Well, as with all our partners internationally, the first ask of Sinn Féin, and I think of all Irish political part um, partners to, uh, parties to our partners, is that we want to ensure that the international support that we have for the Good Friday Peace Agreement mm. um, remains steadfast. One of the outworkings of Brexit, as you will know, was that it threatened the institutions and the principles um, of the Good Friday Agreement, and it was due in no small part to the international support that we received um, that that ensured that the British government didn't unilaterally take um, mm. steps that would have undermined um, and created huge political and social problems in terms of the outworking of the Good Friday Agreement. So that is an ask that we are making and in fairness to all political parties in Australia we have received um, absolute assurance that it remains a priority from an Australian perspective and we're very grateful um, for, for that. As I say, um, we're not necessarily coming to your ministers and making requests what we are saying very clearly is that we want Ireland and the European Union more broadly um, to develop and strengthen, rela strengthen relations um, with Australia, recognising yeah. that Australia is becoming an increasingly important player um, globally and is an important and influencing um, factor right across um, the international community. And we want to share that because we do share many values, we do share many yeah. ambitions. And as I say, we have that shared history now um, with so mm -hmm. many Irish people making Australia their home. The Good Friday Agreement, this is not something that would be front of mind for many Australian voters, but um, it sounds like you asked for reassurance from uh, Penny Wong that that was that the Australian government was in full support. So um, she and the government has acquiesced to that. Um, if these agreements are made behind closed doors, what effect do they have? Do you want the government to be more vocal in support of that? No, and to be very clear, the Good Friday Agreement is 25 years old and it is the underpinning bedrock of the peace and um, progress that we've seen in our country over that period of time. And the Irish peace process um, is, mm. um, I would hope, a beacon of hope to other conflict regions um, in, even to this, um, to this day. The Good Friday Agreement would not have been possible, it would not have been achieved were it not for the international support that, uh, that, that was offered um, across the international yeah, right. community, particularly at the time by the US government. What we want to ensure is that um, people like your minister, Penny Wong, and others um, across the political spectrum, both in Australia Australia and beyond are aware of the value of the Good Friday Agreement to us and to um, international peace building uh, and we want to ensure that the international community rightfully takes credit for the progress that has been made in Ireland but crucially that the international community ensures that that peace isn't taken for granted and that we ensure that the principles yeah. um, of the Good Friday Agreement are upheld as we 
move forward. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, did you talk to Penny Wong as well about uh, the increasing number of Irish youngsters wanting to live in Australia? You addressed this at the start of our interview. Oh, I mean, is Australia just a better place to live, Matt? Uh, 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 clearly, many people from Ireland have found a home in Australia, and mm. it, it's we've a long history in terms of Irish relations with Australia back. Uh, many generations ago, Australia was a threat that was imposed by British governments on Irish people primarily and um, that you would be exiled to Australia. Now, of course, <laughs> many tens of thousands of Irish people see Aus Australia as a place mm. of, uh, of opportunity. And that's all very natural that um, people um, will, will look um, to places like Australia in, in, um, you know, for something different or for a place for them to um, e explore their own opportunities. What I do have a problem mm. with is for some of those young people who have come to Australia, they've come here because they felt that they had no choice because of failures at an Irish political level. And I'm coming to them, people, with a message in the first instance that we want to offer them hope and an opportunity to come home if that's what they want. But also we're coming with a very big project because, as you know, my party and the majority of people across the island of Ireland want to see the reunification of our, of our country. We want to mm. create a new Ireland, a united, a united Ireland. And we know, just like the Good Friday Agreement was dependent on international support, a, sex, a successful transition to a united Ireland yeah. is also going to need international support. And the core of that is going to be our Irish diaspora right across the world, including in Australia. So this evening I will be um, joining others in launching mm. the Australian Friends of I Irish Unity and the Gaelic Club in, in <laughs> Sydney, which I expect will have a big crowd yeah. um, um, of Irish and, and, and others. Um, but I think it is a very positive thing that a political party can come to Australia with a message of hope and optimism for the future. And that's what Sinn Féin is here for today. It sounds like a good party at the Gaelic Club in, in Sydney. Before I let you go, did we really test our uh, diplomatic relationship when Australia thrashed Ireland in the Women's World Cup? And now that they're out, of the World Cup, you're going for the Matildas, aren't you? That goes without saying. They broke our <laughs> hearts, un undoubtedly. I have to say, the Irish people are very proud of our own um, soccer team, women's soccer team. Um, they were the, the first to reach a World Cup finals and they did us incredibly proud. And they kept the Matildas uh, you know, nervous right up until, until the end. Um, <laughs> but um, for sure, I'm not going to say anything other than we're fully behind the Matildas here at Sky News in Canberra today. Uh, excellent. Well, we fully intend to beat England as well, I assure you that. Thanks so much, Matt Carthy. For sure, you'll be, we'll be right behind you. <laughs> I thought so.